Good afternoon, everyone. This is Tamana Bhardwaj. I'm a pediatric occupational therapist. I would like to say thank to uh, World Down Syndrome Committee for providing me this opportunity to, to share my understanding about sensory integration with you all. So uh, the topic for my presentation is sensory integration therapy, which is an evidence-based practice. And we are going to discuss about its role to improve academic and functional performance in children with Down syndrome. So let's discuss about the learning objectives of this presentation. So we will be discussing about the occupational therapist role uh, with Down syndrome children. We'll be discussing about sensory integration theory, the correlation between sensory integration theory and academic and functional performance in children with Down syndrome. Along with that, we'll be discussing some researches related to sensory integration. So let's start with the goals of occupational therapy with Down syndrome children. The, the priority is given to improve the sensory, motor, and cognitive skills in Down syndrome children. This is the foundational skills. This is what we start with. So when, when I'm saying sensory, it means understanding the sensation which are coming from the within the body and making the sense of the sensation coming from the environment and then responding appropriately. When we talk about motor skills, it includes gross motor skills, which includes ability to run, climb, walk, uh, postural uh, control, balance, and uh, moving to fine motor skills, which means manipulating objects uh, in hand, manipulating small objects in hand, and moving on to visual motor skill, which means eye-hand coordination, everything which is related to eye-hand coordination, for example, handwriting. Uh, when we talk about cognitive skills, it includes attention, memory, problem solving, decision making, all these skills. Now, once the foundation, these skills are developed, then it also helps in enhancing performance of functional activities, which include activities of daily living, like dressing, bathing, toileting, maintaining person hygiene. Uh, moving on to academic skills, reading, writing skills. Uh, then uh, it also includes play skills, participating in co-curricular activities, football, basketball, table tennis, all these activities are included in functional activity. Occupation therapy also improved to increase self-esteem, improve self-confidence in children. And it also improved to and promote positive interaction so relationship, which, which are included in social skills. So now to achieve these goals, there are plenty of theories and frame of references which occupational therapists use. However, my favorite and the most effective and reliable and wide, which is used most often, often is uh, sensory integration theory, sensory integration frame of reference. So now let's discuss how it came into practice. So this is a picture of Anna Jean Ayer, who is a clinic, who was a clinical psychologist and an American occupational therapist. She was the one who pioneered sensory integration. She was the one who developed theory of sensory integration. And she also invented number of tests, equipments, and intervention which are used in OT framework even now. Her work was carried forward by her colleagues and students, and this is how it came in practice. So she gave this definition for sensory integration, which says sensory integration is the neurological process that organizes sensation from one's own body and from the environment and makes it possible to use body within the environment. So what does that mean? Let's understand. So first, what happens when the sensory input comes, then the sensory receptors in the body get stimulated. Then this information is processed, organized, interpreted, and stored and by the brain. And then a response is generated accordingly. Let's take an example. For example, you're standing on a deck and you're about to go inside. You're, you're about to go inside a boat. So what, what will happen? Let's, let's assume. So what is happening? You are listening a lot of noises around you're watching so many things around which are not relevant so what do you do what what does your brain do you filter out the information which is not required and you focus on estimating the distance between you and boat using your visual system and then what you do you try to figure out a place to hold 
using your tactile system and then what you do is you use your two hidden your two hidden senses one that is proprioceptive which gives information about your muscles and joints which tells you with how much pressure you have to hold and then how much you have to stretch your leg to go inside the boat now when you step in the boat what happens is your vestibular system which is another hidden sense which is related with your movement body movement against the gravity it tells you that okay it might be risky you have to balance your body to go safely inside the boat and then you move your foot even ahead in the middle of the boat and then you step in and you sit down so this is how the sensory integration works where the brain decide which information needs to be filtered out and which information which sensory system uh, the brain has to use effectively to respond appropriately response appropriately so if we talk about the development of sensory integration this was the crux that i shared now let's go step by step here we will understand how we can correlate the academic and functional expectations specifically in down syndrome children and using the sensory integration uh, development so now if you can see at the extreme right there is end product which are our expectation when we want children to success in academic and functional skills so we want our children to be able to concentrate able to organize information they should have good self control self regulation they they should have good confidence they should be uh, ha having a good academic learning ability so now what happens is to achieve this it's a long process if you can say and it is a step by step process wherein the extreme left you can see these are the senses which plays a foundational unit you can say or building blocks to develop these skills which comes like sensory motor skills perceptual motor skills now if you look at the second part these are the skills which we see are needs intervention in down syndrome for example eye movement which is related with visual attention postural skills poor balance they have low muscle tone gravitational insecurity they have fear from height they have fear from movement eating difficulties sucking difficulties speech difficulties so what happens is we start working on these skills without realizing that whether the foundation is strong or not when i'm when i'm saying foundation is strong or not i what i mean is whether the child has good understanding about these senses or not whether the child is able to interpret the signals coming from these senses or not does the ch child have awareness about that um, if he is getting overwhelmed overwhelmed with specific sense like touch overwhelmed with movement over or not registering a sense appropriately uh, it can be anything uh, is he getting bothered by too much sound or does he know why why the muscle tone is so low even not to do so many exercises and intensive exercises maybe the proper receptor the information from muscles and joint is not reaching to the brain so all these things are very very important this foundation of senses and integration of these senses and if it is happening appropriately if we in, invest more time in the foundation skills most of the skills in the sensory motor and perceptual motor skills develop uh, you can say automatically so let's move on to so this this was the crux like what i wanted to discuss about the role of academic and functional uh, skills of sensory integration in down syndrome children so now the question comes at whether the sensory integration is evidence based practice or not so yes it is an evidence based practice uh, and the research was done by blenda and armandris in 2020 and the this study meets all the standards set by council for exceptional children so yes it is an evidence based practice i want to share about this uh, particular study which was done uh, with autistic kids to evaluate the effectiveness of sensory integration therapy it was done by fifer and the colleague in january to february 2011 wherein two groups of autism spectrum kids were taken uh, with the age range between 6 to 12 years and uh, in those two groups one group fine group fine motor therapy was done and in one group sensory integration group therapy was done and in both groups they have seen that the positive changes were noticed however in the sensory integration group there was significant improvement specifically in the domain of sensory processing and autistic mannerism the repetitive repeated behavior repetitive behavior which 
autistic kids uh, uh, exhibit so however this study discusses consideration for designing future outcome studies so this, the researches will happen will happen more now with regards to down syndrome also there are couple of studies which which have been conducted which shows that sensory integration issues are there in down syndrome children so if you uh, see this one the first one uh, bruni and the colleague which was done in november 2010 they report they their study reported that sensory processing issues are there in down syndrome children there was one which was done in may 2019 which exhibits that there is a pattern of sensory processing impairment and association with maladaptive behavior in children with down syndrome and yes the this second one shows that uh, which was done by ashori and a colleague in Jan june 2018 that there is an effect of sensory integration on attention and motor skills of children with down syndrome so based on this like now now if we think about how does sensory integration treatment work so basically it has uh, these key elements that uh, uh, what happens is the sensory multi sensory input is provided in a meaningful uh, way so that the child is able to learn the adaptive skills to uh, fun function appropriately and so that it it can help in enhancing learning and behavior so the goal is basically to help the child to modulate arousal and which will result in well organized and adaptive interaction within the environment so what is the conclusion of all uh, this discussion that sensory integration intervention appears to enhance the child's ability to modulate behavior and promote social interaction and it does have positive impact on social interaction academic skills purposeful play cross motor and planning skills and participation in home school and family activities so these are the useful links which you can go through and these are the references which i referred uh, for uh, while formulating my presentation uh thank you so much for uh, listening me out and uh, hope it was helpful and i could uh, convey my understanding if you have any uh, doubt or if you have any question please feel free to ask i would be happy to help thank you so much